Hey, Perfect. there he is. What's up? How's it what going? What is up? Hey, man. But yeah, okay, so I did it. All right. Sweet, sweet. And so, okay, you got level 27. Um, yeah, I yeah. I have like a level 60, and then I have like 15 and 10 or something, something like that. Yeah, so, I don't know how this game treats, you know, disparate levels like that. I, okay. I, I'm, I'm not so I'm not so. Do you know? Have you played with yeah. lower level characters before? All the time, yeah. So I, I, it does a pretty good job of like basically when you go to the table, it'll just, it'll just tell you a recommended level, which is uh -huh. like the the medium between the two levels or the three levels, and it generally is pretty hard for the lower level players, but then it's pretty easy for the higher level players. But it kind of depends. Like if the higher level player does have to step up their game, and the lower level player just has to like do their best to stay alive and like kill as many as possible, it's right. it's a pretty good balance that they strike. Um, but it is definitely like one of those problems that they haven't quite perfected, I guess. Uh huh. So yeah, can't well, do much about that though. That's okay. I mean, I've got yeah. you to 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 resurrect me time and again here, so <laughs> so yeah, that'll probably be okay. Of course, as a as the lower level guy, I would probably do better using a bow and trying to stay at range. But one of the things that I wanted to do, and I, I know you can't see my IRL sword. camera right now, but yeah, I've yep. got this two handed sword attachment, and I kind of yep. did want to use it at least a little bit and talk about it. You know, that was kind of one of the things I wanted to go over here. Yeah, I definitely um, do. That sounds fun. But uh, and if I'm so, dying no, too much, we could we can. No, so cool thing is, um, we'll actually basically this is <laughs> this is gonna be like the first take because you're live right now. So this is basically the first look that the public technically has to the beta build, and yeah, we can basically go over the sandbox that has just arrived in the beta build and. This, this should be out to the public within, I think, a week or so, maybe a little bit longer, because uh, they're still working out a few kinks. We might run across a couple of bugs. We can just ignore those or report them later. Uh -huh. um, but, like, yeah, when we come across bugs, that's how they'll they'll fix those and hopefully get it better for the live audience. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it's pretty good so far. I think they've done a couple iterations of this build, and, and they tend to have some pretty solid beta builds in the first place. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, we, we basically will go ahead and uh, test out a few things. I mean, you can you can tell I'm a skeleton guy. I'm, I'm guessing you've never really seen this before. No, no. Yeah. I, I assume so, that that was part of the beta. And obviously, yeah. obviously, their intention is to get this released before Halloween, or else yeah. this is just a lot of work that went to waste here. <laughs> or or during Halloween. Yeah, ba yeah. I'm guessing it's it's going to come before Halloween. And that I don't think you were playing this game during the holiday update during Christmas, were you? Do you remember? No. Okay, uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, because during that time, they also had a holiday-esque, the holiday theme for that update. And I think they did a pretty good job, uh, but it wasn't nearly as cool as this one. This one's like a real update combined with a couple themes and some little uh, interesting things that I guess are limited time. Um, right. But yeah, no, it will, we'll go through a couple of things. And uh, as we go through those, we can have discussions as well. Um, it, it'll be hard to strike a balance of looking at stuff and discussing stuff in depth because we have a limited time. Um, and I guarantee we won't be able to cover all of what we would like to talk about or what has come in this beta build. But we'll do our best. I'll try before we get into to discussions. I'll give you like a quick tour as quick as I can of the outpost and the new stuff that has come. Let's uh, do it then, because I think that's one yeah. of the I think that's one of the uh the things that uh that that our viewers would really be interested in as a sneak peek at this beta. So that's that's some good meaty content there. So let's do it. Yeah, cool. So first things first, I'm going to go into my room and uh, turn off haste so that I'm not like sprinting around far ahead of you all the time. Um, so let's turn on decrease fall damage. Sweet. And uh, I think everything else looks fine and dandy. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> I guess I don't think there's anything in the player rooms necessarily. Well, there kind of is. There, There's... Um, cosmetics which you can find outside uh, i think i haven't actually played enough to like explore the chests and get enough chests to see the new stuff but i'm pretty sure there's new actually i know that there's new cosmetics that you can unlock free to play but one of the most amazing things let's go over here real quick 
is, well, in my opinion, most amazing for the game itself as like a continued sustainable game is this right here. We've got paid cosmetics finally. And so this oh. shouldn't it shouldn't ruin the game as in like it's not a pay to win game or anything. You don't yeah. get any yeah. additional benefits. It's just you get to look cool or or cooler with uh -huh. the purchase of these. And the purchase for the beta build is a little bit cheaper than the purchase for the uh, public once this or this actually comes out to everybody. Awesome. Um, but yeah, once it comes out to everybody, uh, I don't know the final prices yet. I think they're still working that out uh, and, and getting a little bit of feedback and, and kind of just like figuring that out. But once they do, that's going to be awesome. There's the skeleton avatar, the zombie avatar over there, and the patron supporter bundle, which awesome. I think the, awesome. the supporter bundle is a little bit more expensive but then these uh and then the zombie and skeleton i think are limited time deals but yeah i mean as you can tell i'm a, I'm a skeleton so i have that one <laughs> and, and these are just purely cosmetic that. yes correct yeah and all, I, all i'm a big i'm a big fan of that man i i, cool. I really am I, I i don't like pay to win but that's only because of the uh because of the unfair nature of it. But I am, unlike I feel like a lot of gamers, I, I am very understanding and supportive of these guys need to establish a consistent revenue stream because yes. people don't, a lot of people, a lot of people I feel like don't really appreciate the expense that is involved in keeping a live service like this operating. Yeah. And if you want games like this to grow and evolve and you get better and add more content and things like that, they've got to have money coming in, man. Database yep. administrators and developers and marketers and, you know, uh, all of those guys, the, the, those are very expensive, not to mention yep. the hardware and the equipment and the, you know, resources like electricity and all of that, that they, that they consume. Right. No, I'm, I totally agree with you there. Um, and like, I'm, I'm kind of against that whole, well, definitely against that whole pay to win uh, yeah. concept that, that has like really arisen in the mobile industry, mobile gaming. Yeah. Um, destroyed, just destroyed in, yeah. in, in my view. In, me too. Me too. And, and I mean, they, they still did pretty well with like PC that most of the PC industry is kind of just, you, you pay one time and, and you don't have to worry about stuff or it's just free to play and cosmetics handle all of the the financials there but yeah i think the way that they're doing it is awesome they they earn money from the game this game is definitely worth what it costs plus they can earn a little bit more for the people that really do truly love the game want to support the developers and help it thrive and continue to thrive so mm -hmm. this is still the same nothing else here um we'll we'll go over i think uh there is a little easter egg type thing here um and I'm wondering what is this exactly. talking about a raid over here? Yeah, the dungeon raid. Is that like a true raid? Is that something new? No, so it's it's the uh, the red quest mode that we look at on the maps. So the the red ones, the dungeon raid. The blue oh, ones, right. the crystal hunt. So the okay. green ones, the okay. Soul harvest. So this is not new. Okay. No, no. It it was like fairly new at one point. I, I think they switched. Like the quest modes used to be in this main outpost, and then they added this room and put some stuff in it. But yeah, that that's been yeah, okay. there. Okay, that's just a regular tutorial thing. Yeah, okay. e exactly. Um, come over here real quick. I don't know. I don't know if you saw where I went. Yeah, uh, I, I see you. Oh, okay, sweet. <laughs> so yeah, over here. Uh, go ahead and well, let's let's grab a little. Here, here. Take this. Or or your own. That's that's fine. Come over here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They got this going. Yeah. Okay, hold yeah. on. That's uh, that's ale. I need a. Exactly. I need one of these. Well, well, I don't know if it's ale. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. But, uh, it's something. Oh, look at that. Yeah. This drink, I like it. Another. Heck yeah. <laughs> Woo. Toast. Oh yeah, yeah. So that that's awesome. People have kind of been begging for that, and ever since it's been there, people have been curious, like, oh, when's it gonna start pouring some fluids? And yeah. uh, Quaker X told me the last uh, one of the last discussions we had that like that's gonna yeah, come I saw soon. That. I saw you guys talking <laughs> about that. I, I, I yeah. did. That's uh, pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's, that that's a neat little thing. That, that I mean, it's you know, it's just uh, it, it's 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 flavor, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. There is also something hidden in this lobby that just kind of randomly spawns in different places. Uh, I, I didn't see it off the top of, like, just real quick searching, um, but that's just something that we'll leave for people to figure out themselves, uh, and you can figure that out yourself, too, because it's, it's kind of like an Easter egg type thing. But I think that's basically it for the outpost. Um, it is pretty cool. And again, there's a bunch of cosmetics that people can search through um, once that they get to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously there's the skeleton, but there's, there's so much more you can customize. And it's not just the outfit. It's like individual cosmetics you get from buying it. So it's pretty cool. Then the big thing uh, that's not just the, um, the theme, the, the Halloween theme, to this update is the sandbox arena so that's something that has been discussed um, and was planning to come out and yeah you can see it's it's only in the um, what is this the, the underworld for some reason but it, it doesn't even matter like it's you'll, you're able to choose different realms within it so we just choose this uh, I'm gonna show you the sandbox for a little bit and it's kind of cool um, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts. Like, do you have any thoughts before we even get into the sandbox of like what you think about sandboxes in general being in games? <coughs> um, <laughs> well, my opinion is that um, I, I think they're awesome because they seem to be very popular. Uh, people in general seem to really like sandboxes not really one of my favorite ways to play i'm more of a traditional gamer i like a, you know i like a quest i like an objective yeah. i like to interact with npcs i like to you know you and um uh silver tongue were talking about uh the benefits of true cooperative gameplay and in yeah. in multiplayer games i really like that so sandboxes tend to be just a lot of well, just, I mean, just exactly that, you know, waves of enemies yeah. and, and, you know, playing around with different th th things like the, the murder simulator that is, uh, sword and, uh, blade, blade and sorcery. sorcery. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, no, I, I agree. Uh, and I, you might've like heard that full discussion. I don't know if you got that far. The video with Sil Silver Dawn Devil was so long. Um, but our final discussion there was about sandbox and, I am along the lines of like, yeah, I agree with you and Silver Tongue Devil. I'm not a huge fan of sandboxes, but I think that kind of like you mentioned, it is pretty important to have a sandbox. Yes. Uh, and I, I think that's not just because we want to allow people to mess around and like make funny videos and stuff like that. I think it's also a, a fundamental way to help the game grow in a sense and like for the community itself to kind of build the game maybe not uh in the sense of you can do the cool things that developers can do but you can mess with the already existing stuff that the developers have created and you can create your own stuff which the developers could get ideas and it can help them brainstorm and maybe there are really cool things that come from sandbox that make it into the game as more of an official feature and they add to it um and i think like particularly challenges would be really cool to see eventually from the sandbox i think they the de devs have kind of hinted at that and that we might get that pretty soon but this in itself i'm not a huge fan of this particular sandbox and what it has come out with so far but it is kind of interesting like if you want to test things if you want to test certain enemies or you just want to like test that long sword you don't have to go and find the long sword just to try it out um, but I do, I do also appreciate like having a quest and an objective and like trying to get to something, building your way and working your way to get something is definitely a, a fun way to get play games rather than just like you have everything and it's kind of your choice <laughs> rather than the game developers who went through and made it into a way that you can enjoy it. So, well, and, and not just testing from the, from the player's uh, perspective, uh, but also, um, I'm sure that the sandbox is just a treasure trove of analytical data for the for the developers, you know, yep. so that's just a great way for them to uh, do a consistent sort of um, uh, uh, gathering of empirical data for them to improve the game. And then so that's the, the first great benefit. And then the second great benefit is, uh, again, back to regardless of whether I enjoy it or you enjoy it. The community at large seems to really enjoy sandboxes. So anything that players really like, 
you definitely want to ensure that you include that in your game to keep your player base strong. Because right. live service games need a strong player base to be successful, period. So, Exactly, yeah. Cool, well, I'm going to go ahead and create an encounter. You won't be able to see all of the things that I'm doing here. Uh, that's a suggestion that I made. Maybe they'll uh, tweak it a little bit so that both players can see it kind of like that outpost table. But you can see a few things once they start to pop up. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to create an, an encounter. You can see the realms changing when I choose which realm I want. Just the theme around us changes. I'm going to stick with Underworld. I, I personally like the Underworld aesthetic the most. Um, and then okay. the difficulty, it shows us the recommended here. So it says that uh, because, like, I guess the average of R2 levels, they recommend Tier 6. Um I'm just going to do it oh, one geez. lower than tier six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, maybe two. I'm going to I'm gonna do tier four here. Um, okay. I, I tier think four is what I play that. on. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. And then uh, the weapons, we can actually make it so that we have the same, or, or not the same weapons, but it just gives us weapons. So I'm going to do the long swords because, yeah, we want to test out long swords. Um, sure. Hazards. I actually don't even really know what that means. There's pits only, and then there's none. Oh, it actually like puts a pit in there. Do you see the pit changing over there? Where I right now it's no pit, and now it's a pit. No, I don't see anything changing over here. Oh, interesting. Okay, I guess that's just my view. Huh. Well, that's a thing. Um, I'm gonna just leave it on none. We don't need to fall into stuff. Uh, there's pickups where I can change what we get from killing enemies uh, but I'm just going to leave that at default so I think it just like changes to random things and then select an enemy um, do you have any particular enemies you ha you enjoy killing with the great swords or swords in general um, it, yeah it, well it, <laughs> naturally enemies that are melee based and yeah. versus range based but, uh, but apart from that n not really okay okay yeah I'm going to give us some imp minions uh, the sword minion, sword imp guys. I'm gonna give some skeletons and ooh, skeleton or skeleton warrior. Let's do skeleton warrior, which isn't the skeleton boss. We'll leave the skeleton boss there, and some zombies. Just uh, always enjoyable to kill zombies. Um, okay. Enemy type. Sounds good. Yeah, you can choose like ice, poison, fire, all that good stuff, or you can just leave it at random. I'm gonna leave it at random and enemy count. We're gonna do we're gonna do ten per wave, and then you can have like I think up to ten waves. But now you can see there's a wave list that shows yes. up for you. Yeah. Oh, I guess right here. Yeah. Um, but so there's that, and then I mean I could just do like zombie, easier skeleton minions, and I could do I don't know what other we could do some wasps or or bats. Actually, that was that's a little change that they did. Um, but yeah, so there's that. I'll just do two waves here. We can do that, and then maybe we can run a dungeon after this. Okay, um, yeah, sounds good. If, cool. So now I just go to next and start encounter, and it brings it up. We have a random greatsword, uh, which, yeah, I think your greatsword changed. Can you check it? Is yep, that different it did. from what you had? Yeah, so mm -hmm. it just gives us a random one, which I, I think that's pretty cool. And then you can just, like, test different models and stuff. And, yeah, they did do a couple of changes to the greatsword as well. So if it feels any better, that's probably why. Sweet. Oh, wow, I got an ice longsword. That's pretty powerful. Oh, oh he's on you. Okay. Uh -oh. There we go. Oh, I'm good. Cool. Still got more zombie guy over there. And it is it's kind of interesting that like the I mean playing as a level 60 I only really got the chance to see the really big great swords. Uh-oh. Ice bat. Watch out for the ice bat. Oh, oh no. no. I don't like ice enemies. The, yeah, the ice bats are a little bit slower than they used to be, especially in the lower difficulties. Oh. Oh. Sweet. Oh yeah. Ooh. All right. Actually, they get progressively more powerful as the waves. They do not continue. No. They're they're whatever difficulty you set it to. Uh, I think 
could be cool if you had that ability to kind of change that. But yeah, so it, it switched us back to our, our default loadouts here and teleports us back to the, the park oh. here. And I can okay. just, so yeah, we went through it. I actually don't even know if there's a way to tell like what wave you're on and, <laughs> and what you're at when you're going through the sandbox. But I mean, it's kind of cool. And, and the whole atmosphere out there, there of just the Coliseum, I think that that room is just really yeah. interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah we, we won't it spend is an too interesting much. mode. It, are, yeah. are there perks and, and, and rewards that are associated specifically with this mode? No. And that's, yeah, that's one of the things that I think they have so much potential for right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's kind of just that first iteration of make the sandbox first, and then you can do a lot of things with the sandbox. Um, so yeah, I have a feeling that many things will come out of the sandbox, like challenges, like leaderboards and trophies and, or like trophies from the challenges, achievements from the challenges, that kind of stuff. But right. at the moment, it's just what we got here. Um, and still, I think this is pretty cool looking. But well, hey, one of the things before I forget, one of the things yeah. that I wanted to be sure to ask you about mm -hmm. um, when we did this was something that you were using and talking about when you were doing your underdogs uh, videos, and that okay. is the that is the third person camera. Right. I, okay. So so uh, you and I had a conversation in the comments one time, and I was saying that. One of the things that I really loved about uh, co-op, editing a co-op game, is the ability to switch camera perspectives because you can get yeah. much more dramatic shots that way. And if you mm -hmm. had a third-person perspective, it would be that much better right. um, because one of the things that, I'm, that I've really been focusing on on my channel is working on editing uh, in such a way to make the content much yeah. more interesting to watch and you know and by you can the go, way you can go you back do, and watch my you do a really good job i just wanted to cut you off and say that because i and for anybody watching this go watch his channel go check out his channel because cayman wolf does an amazing job of like swapping perspectives and having his uh his camera of himself as well within kind of like the mixed reality of the whole recording you do a really good job with that. Yeah. One of the mentions. Hey, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate no that because you can see if you go, you know, if you go to my channel, you can, look, you know, from the first video, which is basically just a recording with no editing until <laughs> yeah. more recent videos. That's what I've really been putting a lot of focus on. And not only have I been, you know, looking at um, ways to make gameplay videos more interesting. I've just been watching a lot of uh, content and doing a lot of reading about just editing in general did mm -hmm. you know that did you know that in modern films uh the average shot length is less than two seconds it, you, you don't really wow. you don't really <laughs> uh, you don't really think about that but since i read that i go back and i watch some um popular modern films and mm -hmm. it's true i mean just as you're watching it just every time the camera cuts every time there's a jump cut from one shot to another just yeah. count in your head, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, or whatever, and you'll see that that those cuts, those cuts are constant. Um, yeah, it, it, and, you know, and, and that the, that takes a lot of time to do, a lot of yes. time and and work, and and you get better at it, so it takes less time as you do it more. But that's but it's kind still of a lot like, of work. It is still a lot of work, and that is why like these TV shows <laughs> and stuff they they do a good job, and YouTubers aren't just like taking over the world. But then there are uh -huh. really good YouTubers as well that are taking advantage of these tools that these these ma modern tv shows and and modern editors are are using and yeah no it's i, I agree it's really interesting to kind of but, like compare those two but when you're recording a single player game you don't have yeah. that ability to make cuts right. like that and so that's why i'm very interested in the idea of that third person perspective camera because i felt like that's something that uh, vr has needed for a while so how were you yeah. doing that was that was that a function of like the steam game. or no. of the game yeah. Okay. So it, yeah, it's something that each developer has to individually implement into their game. And I think maybe in the future, there is the possibility, like I could totally see there being the possibility of a third person camera just defaulted in every game and like yes. meta enforcing that kind of thing. Or However, at least right exposing now, an API to allow developers yeah, to easily incorporate it. Exactly. And that, that's kind of what they're doing with every like cool feature that's coming out, mixed reality, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, at the moment, it is one of those things that it's actually with Underdog specifically, you can only do it in PC VR. You got to connect 
to the PC I and see. stream from it. And then basically that stream to your PC shows the third perspective, third person perspective. And then obviously in the headset, you're still in first person. Otherwise it would just be janky and weird. Um, but I think like another layer of coolness in there would be if you were able to just straight up record from your headset and you didn't have to connect to your PC, you didn't have to do PC VR. Um, I just don't think that our headsets are quite strong enough to do that kind of processing of two different perspectives at once. And yeah, it's just a little bit too much overhead for these standalone headsets at the moment. Um, but yeah, if you well, have you, a PC, go ahead. You, you, well, you did mention that it was a possibility that that could come to Dungeons of Eternity in the future. Is yes. that something yeah. that a developer mentioned so, to you? Yeah. Quaker X actually in, in one of our discussions, I forgot which one, but he mentioned that it should be possible to give us these spectator features, not only on PC VR, but also in the standalone game. So I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out even before something like the Quest 4 comes out and like the next iterations of these technologies. But um, I do, I think that what he's probably referring to is more so of like, we can see different perspectives from another device, basically. I don't think what he was referring to is just that standalone device handling two different perspectives at once. Um, but it still would be really cool if, like, for example, we could stream to our computer or to our phone, and those streams would see the third-person perspective, or you could just swap. You could choose which one you want, the first person or third person. Um, yeah, and then it's more, more like the network and then the other devices are handling that perspective rather than just the one headset handling both perspectives. So yes, yeah, I that think would be great. I agree. That would be really cool. And, and like you mentioned, it would just make it so much easier for us as content creators to go and like create cooler videos that make more sense to the people that watch them. And like, I've yeah. gone through so much overhead and I don't know if you've seen my earlier videos, but like you mentioned, it is, a process so like my first couple videos were just me recording with the native quest recording and just like doing what i could and kind of testing things out testing the waters and as i progressed i kind of made them better and better and i i tested different things and tried different things and started doing the swapping perspective stuff as well um but it is it's just tough it's a lot of overhead and i think soon we won't have that much overhead but at the moment it's the people like us that are just willing to put up with that uh, ton of overhead and just real. We're I guess we're stubborn that we just we really want to make this this good content that's easy to understand or easy to watch and we do it anyway. So yeah, your your content yeah. has definitely uh, evolved o over time as well. I I do feel like you probably started from a uh, position was uh, started with a little more experience than I did. So you you know you but uh, but. There's still definitely a, a, an evolution of your content. Uh, Burnt Pan's channel, by the way, is JJ Bonta. That's uh, his name, and he's changed the name of his channel from Burnt Pan to JJ Bonta. So you should check his channel out. Particularly, um, I, I believe you've branched into some more different types of games now, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> like you mentioned, but Underdogs. Uh, I just made a Racket NX video. I've made a masters of light video but it's more just like first impressions of those games and i still focus on dungeons of eternity as like because i really do love this game so i, yes. I want to create as much content as possible especially because kind of one of the big reasons i created this channel was i wasn't seeing anyone else doing it like silver tongue devil had his tips and tricks a lot of people had first impressions but nobody really went in depth and this game really deserves an in-depth take in that a lot of people will just try it out and not realize that there is so much more that they can find out they can explore and uh the potential of it is what really catches me and that is just like such a fantastic game yeah. yeah and and that's kind of yeah. how i found your your channel was that was for that very reason so what i tend to do before i i purchase or dive into any game is the first thing i do is i look for reviews and then mm -hmm. the and then the next thing I do is I look for gameplay content, and there just wasn't yep. a whole lot of it. And yep. you know I find that to very often be the case in uh, with VR in general because it's you know very unfortunate that VR gaming just hasn't skyrocketed. And I, I believe yep. that the reason for that is because I mean like even my viewers that are you know potentially watching the the stream now, you cannot mm -hmm. look at this on a flat screen and appreciate 
the sensation of being yeah. in this world the way we're experiencing it now. There's just no way. Yeah. The only way you can understand uh, what it's like to experience VR is by experiencing it. And so yeah. I think that's probably the reason that it hasn't just skyrocketed to, you know, to this point. Yeah, that and I mean, you mentioned the videos that there's not enough videos for VR. And I think a big part of that too is because we do have to go through all this overhead that we talked about of, of recording. It's not nearly as easy to record VR videos as it is to record PC videos it, or, or yeah, mobile videos, like basically anything else. Yeah. So, yeah. and and not only is it harder to record, but also doesn't translate as well. Like you said, you have to experience it first person to really truly understand it. So, yeah. But I, you yeah. know, I, I, honestly, I believe that it's more interesting content to watch. I, I oh, really totally. do. Um, oh yeah. You know, I, 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 of the small subscriber base that I have, uh, my subscribers uh, have expressed a lot of appreciation of the, you know, the fact that I'm doing this because there's, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of it out there. And of course, if I were in this to make money and to grow a channel and get it monetized real fast and all of that, we I wouldn't would even touch VR. VR. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I do this for fun. I, I, I am trying to become a monetized content creator. But mm -hmm. I, I've got a couple other channels that I'm that I'm focusing on for that. This is what I do for fun, and I have no intention to stop this. And the 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 VR is really the 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 funnest content uh, to create. Oh, yeah. I, I to totally really agree. appreciated by the people that are looking for it. Yeah, and and on top like it, these topics kind of like intermingle with each other, where the spectator that we were talking about also it it, it relates to being able to understand it and like have fun with it as well and i think that once we are able to see that third person perspective kind of like you do for sports right now when people mm -hmm. watch sports they watch entertainment when filmmakers are making stuff they are usually in third person the first person perspectives are kind of just like a gimmick and maybe not gimmicky but like they're just they're experimenting with first person expect perspectives and like a lot of gamers have those just because that's the default like you watch games video games in first person usually but when it comes to real life and it comes to actually watching sports and entertainment and that kind of stuff you're watching it from a third person perspective generally yes uh, maybe yes. that second person perspective as well but that's something that i guarantee will come to vr and it's something that vr can do so much better than first than like uh, any flat screen video gaming content uh, because we are inside of it and we it is so much closer to reality than something like traditional gaming or traditional uh flat screen stuff so. yeah i feel like i hope that at some point meta sort of realizes and embraces this because you know, these are the kind of things that could potentially make uh, VR really, you know, really boom. And Meta, I, I believe, you know, that uh, that Meta has the resources, um, mm -hmm. financial resources and technical resources to really support that kind of thing. I mean, yeah. if you think back to like a Call of Duty Black Ops 2, do you remember the, the theater mode that they had? And you could, after any game... You could go back into the game and you could look, you could watch that entire game from any of the other players' perspectives, or right. you could pull the camera out of Replay the modes. out of the player yeah. and look at it in third person, mm -hmm. the whole game, the whole yep. game. And the reason they were able to do that was because they had the ser the resources server side. So I yeah, believe yeah. that Meta could probably, you know, really step up and support that if they, you know, if they see the value in it, and I hope that they do at some point. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, I don't think they quite see the value there yet uh and I, I think their approach to making vr and xr mainstream is they just want to get out more and better products first mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll focus on making those products so much better because at the moment like they they still have amazing product like they, this is the number one headset for the majority vast majority of people getting quest 3 quest 2 or, or 3s or whatever um but there there is yeah like you say so much potential to do more with it and they just haven't really invested and i know that they're investing billions of dollars a lot of the money that they're getting from reality labs which is this quest stuff they are putting into these xr glasses the uh the orion glasses they just announced yeah. and all of that other stuff and they're trying to make it mainstream they're trying to make this whole xr concept mainstream which should help both vr and ar and whatever else um 
but yeah, it's it's kind of just like their priorities differ. And I think maybe if a Steam headset comes out again, like the Index, but some other new Steam standalone headset comes out, that could be a huge game changer. But yeah, it's kind of just like a waiting game for us, and and we're doing the best that we can to to yeah. kind of promote this amazing medium that we have at the moment. But yeah, 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 and and promote it, and that, and that's what I and I've said that to my subscribers in a number of videos, my viewers in a number of videos. Look, man, you know, if you got a friend that hasn't tried VR, put your freaking headset on their face, man. Put it on yeah. their face, you know, because you, you, the only way to, to really get, you know, get this medium to grow is by having people exposed to it. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. So let's uh, return to the outpost here. We'll just bam, teleport into the space again. And OK, now we're back. So it doesn't even show in the sandbox like what kills you got what xp you got i don't think i mean did we miss maybe there was like a scoreboard at the end there i still haven't explored it a ton either yeah i, um, I didn't notice but yeah it is and also it i just saw you looking up there and and like it is there's a cool i don't know if that's what you're looking at but like <laughs> the moon and or uh, it's like a, well, an eclipse or something i don't I what don't i'm really looking at is the thing that i've observed, observed since i've been in here in, in yeah. the beta and it's a thing that i really like and that's that the whole place is so much less red <laughs> yes yes i i, I, I didn't agree. like that i felt it was way too red and too mm. um i kind of I, I honestly i kind of wish they would back off of the <laughs> you know the the colors on all of these weapons and everything a little bit i mean it's it's a cool effect but i feel like it's a little overdone yeah, yeah, same. I, I do wish there were more, like, uh, specific parts, like maybe just uh, the bottom of the handle is glowing or maybe the top of the handle or just specific parts have, like, a gem on them or something rather than the whole thing just being gl yeah. glown up. And I, I, I even prefer the rare weapons over the legendary weapons because I don't know if you've noticed, but the when you get a rare element, it's more of a blue color. Like, these are both rare. Neither of these are legendaries. Uh -huh. Um the legendary color is more purple than blue, even though yeah. it's ice. It, it kind of just doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's something that like, it's cool at first, but then after you look at it and play with it a lot, it's, it's kind of like, I actually prefer the colors, the, like the whole color scheme and uh, all of that stuff earlier in the game and like lower tiers, even on the enemies. Uh, it's just, yeah, the brightness, like you said, is a little bit much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks like they're toning that down a little bit, so that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, especially in this this update. And they did it in the Christmas update, too, where they had, well, they didn't tone down the colors. They kind of just made more of a blue aesthetic, which I think I looked, liked a little bit more. But this, yeah, I, I love this aesthetic in the, the main lobby. And I hope it, honestly, I kind of hope it stays, even though it's the Halloween theme. Um, but yeah, it's... it's it, it does cool. fit. It fits either way, anyway. Yeah. yeah, it fits with the dungeon name just the dungeon aesthetic for yeah. sure so cool uh go ahead and let's let's try to find a a map that we want to do uh, we probably shouldn't make it too long because i have a feeling we'll be discussion discussing throughout and yeah absolutely we, we may uh, not even have time to finish it honestly but uh but, yeah. but it doesn't matter <laughs> i mean the really the the interview and the interaction is w what this is mostly about so i agree i agree um let's see I'm trying to find a and we, and we don't have to, like when we do a dungeon we could just go straight from the start to the end. I'm thinking this one looks like probably the smallest one. Which one? And the uh it's in Sandstorm Eld Eldritch yeah. Forge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we can do that. And I think uh tier 4 was probably good from what we had. Do you think that Yeah, that that's works fine. For you? Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Um, I what, what what I have? I've got the staff. I'm just going to be using my staff. That works. If we get what kind uh, of staff devours, is this? This is a chrono staff. Chrono, okay. Yeah. Oh, also, there was one big thing that came out this update that is we don't have to get in depth about it, but I do just want to mention it. Spears. Oh. Um, yeah. Interesting. Spears have come. And they're kind of like these staffs, but just, I mean, obviously it's got a tip at the end. And I think they're a little bit longer than staffs. Plus you can hold the bottom, which for some reason with staffs, you can only hold up here as the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike if you hold the other side, it's kind of more of the bottom anyway. 
But so is it like a combination? Is it like an actual spear? It's a combination of a melee yeah. uh, and a and a throwing mm -hmm. weapon. You can awesome. you can throw it like this, and it won't it won't flip around kind of like this. It'll just go straight. Um, awesome. And yeah, no, it's it feels pretty good in my opinion. I think it feels a little bit better than the uh, great sword or the long sword when it first came out. Yeah, but, I hope I get um, one. I'm looking forward to it. That that yeah, sounds yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, and that they ch changed the angle. Like I had, a, I had a problem with these staffs where when I held it, it like it was it was tilted up really high. Even though I was naturally holding it straight out, it would be just like the game designed to have it tilted up. So I could never like just smack the floor with it really easily. But now I can, and they fixed they they have that for the spears, so it just feels more natural. And I think that they did a great job so far. But that's obvious obviously for the community to to check that out and. Oh, I, I, wow, me rambling on that the maps changed. <laughs> so we oh choose no! Another, okay, choose another map Let's here. See. But actually, oh, that's look, not a bad profitable thing. caverns. That looks like a pretty simple one. Yeah. Oh look, okay. both of these look simple. Shadowed, cool. shadowed catacombs and profitable caverns both look simple. So sweet. Maybe Let's shadowed do the catacombs. Shadow. I agree. Yeah. Let's do that. Here we go. So, yeah, have you used any any staffs yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the gravity yeah. staff is, of course, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I love the gravity staff. The uh, chrono staff's possibly, I think chrono staff's probably my second favorite. Uh, I, I think it's probably the strongest, but um, no, it's it's definitely fun. Oh, ooh. Come here. Once you're. Oh, once I'm you're not in, in yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Right here. Look at this. Oh. Okay. So. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to show you what this awesome thing does here. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. But yeah, no, that, that's something where like if you find it randomly throughout the dungeon, you can just like, and, and yeah, it's just putting it to your mouth and it, it does that. <laughs> and you can't see it at your mouth, but when it's somebody else, you can see it lighting up. Oh, I love it's it. Funny. But yeah, is it's, this... it's kind of like the map where it just randomly spawns. It can spawn in the outpost too. And once you find it, you can just go to a friend and just like come up behind them and do a little scream. And, <laughs> and it's like, it's like those screaming, cool. exploding heads from the Lava Forge dungeon. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay, I love it. So you can't put but, yeah. this in your inventory. So I guess you just kind of have to leave it. Yeah, or you hold it the whole entire dungeon. But let's... uh get this lever over here or pressure pad and the second pressure pad so yeah I've, I've played so much of this game at this point that I I just kind of memorize every single room that I'm in and and it's like <laughs> it, it kind of takes out the fun from the people that I play with with of like you, you've got to find out and figure out how to do these little puzzles but uh, I, I try not to spoil too much stuff yeah, and I've been noticing that um, I've been noticing that you're I, I, when you stream, I see a lot of, or uh, in your content, I see a lot of rooms that I don't see when I play. So I don't know if that's a function of just the fact that you're higher level. No, it's just me, I guess, playing a lot, and and it it does. Do you play a lot of different realms, or do you generally stick to the same realm? Um, I I play different ones. Okay. Yeah. So then, I, I, mostly it's just, I, I play the first one, whatever that first one is called. Underworld. Yeah. Hate, same. Yeah. But I hate the freeze enemy, so I've been playing more of the uh, the the lava lava levels. Yeah. Lately. Yeah. Fair enough. Go ahead, and you can do the honors for our first chest here. And yeah, no, I, I think so. The rooms are basically just totally random. It is not dependent on your level. It's only dependent on the realms, uh, and you can still get this same or similar room in different realms. I, I think the exact same rooms, but some rooms are limited to certain realms is, is my understanding of it. Uh, so, yeah. No, I, I think this room in particular is limited to the Sandstorm realm. Okay. But, yeah. Um, before we go into our, our first battle here, do you want to explain anything about your uh, go into our two-handed weapon or two-handed greatsword topic here Let's oh yeah see. yeah so so this is um and i've talked about this in numerous videos of mine but uh but yeah. you know i'm still a small channel so i'm still getting constantly getting new um viewers who haven't seen my content before so any chance i yeah. have to talk about it i like to talk about it but this yeah. 
This is the Wield VR one stock. This is my favorite uh, gun stock. Um, it, you know, it's it's uh, it's very versatile. Uh, it, it's just it's really probably one of the better gun stocks out there. It's a little on the pricey side, but I, I figured out and I have a video on this. So, you know, look, look back through my my videos. It's I forget what the title is, but it's uh, it's very obvious. It's a video about how to reconfigure this Wield VR one stock. To be I'll try a, to link that in the description, by the way, just for people oh, to easily see it. So that's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. So this this is uh, that video is, shows how to, in, you know, in, in thirty seconds reconfigure the Wield VR one stock to be a two handed sword attachment. Which I man, I, you know, I, I love sword play in VR, and uh, I have been looking for a two handed sword attachment and I have looked high and low, man, and I just cannot find one. And it's weird yeah. because I find, you know, golf club attachments and mall saber attachments and steering wheel <laughs> attachments and ping pong paddle attachments, and I can't right. find a two handed sword attachment. Yeah. Uh, well, Glisco made one for the, uh, uh, for the Quest 2, but it was dependent upon the Quest 2 controller ring, so it doesn't work for the Quest 3. Ah, uh, um, okay. Yeah, but I figured out how to reconfigure this Wield VR one stock to work as a really good two-handed sword attachment, and that video shows how to do it. And basically what it does is it just allows you to keep your hands locked together when you're using the two-handed sword, so it feels like you're actually using a two-handed sword. Yeah. Uh, so Because without this, I would not use a two-handed sword because it was just too awkward to try to keep my hands locked together, you know? Sweet. So anyway... Yeah, thanks yeah, for no. you know giving me an opportunity to, to talk about that a little bit. Will VR, by the way, um, I, I've been talking to, uh, uh, to to some of their uh, marketing uh, people and engineers, and they they are. I sent them some videos, and my understanding is that they're going to use some of the videos that I sent them, and they're going to cut them up and, and and put them into their marketing material. So that's very exciting that's awesome. for me, and hopefully that'll yeah. get some more eyes on my channel as well. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, no, on top of it being really good for long swords, I'm guessing it's also going to be pretty good for, I mean, staffs already. You can use staffs to just melee stuff. It's not yeah. optimal, not like the great sword, but um, you can with, with spears now um, as the new weapon. Those are also two-handed capable at I, least. You don't have to. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I, it I will like be that. great for those because one of the okay. things, one of the advantages of this is it's really easy to, I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but well, uh, on I mean, the live stream. Yeah. But yeah. Um, for, for the people that are listening to this or seeing it on my channel, go to Cayman Wolf's channel and, or Decrepit Gamer. And uh, you, you can see what that is. I might even actually like when I clip this video, I might even have like our two views. Um, yeah. Kind of like I did yeah. with Silver Tongue Devil. But, yeah. yeah, and you can probably zoom in on because I, I've got an IRL camera, so you can probably zoom in on me doing this. But the Wield yeah. VR is very conducive to it. It's got a little latch right here that you can just, un, you know, un unlatch, you know, toolessly and mm -hmm. change the space between your hands by sliding this bar out like this. And you Sweet. can leave it like that so you can dynamically change the space between your hands or you can just lock it back down so depending on what kind of weapon you have you can make that configuration change in just a matter of seconds that's awesome yeah no i, I appreciate it. and i saw that like as you mentioned earlier i i saw you uh posting that <laughs> in the dungeons of eternity discord and i i was immediately interested and and kind of popped up and continued our discussions from there but i think that that is a really cool thing that people have been looking for and i have seen in the discord people asking like oh is there some sort of attachment that allows me to do great sword a little bit better? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, I think that that is something that people, especially down the road, because great sword is still fairly new to the game, but down the road when a lot of people have been playing this game for a while and a lot of people are, are preferring great swords, that would help those specific people. And I think that is a really cool attachment. The only drawback to this in its current configuration is mm -hmm. you have to, your bottom hand your offhand has to be at a little bit of an angle because of the way, just mm. because of the way that it's designed. But if they had a riser here to extend this grip out away from this bar a little bit more, then you could have both hands completely perpendicular. And I mentioned that in my video that shows how to yeah. reconfigure the one stock this way. And mm. Wield VR saw that video and they said, that is great feedback. And we're taking your, your we've been looking at, you know, ways to do this for a while. And, and so they're, they're you know, they're going to take my videos and take that feedback. And I believe 
that they're going to announce this as an officially supported configuration of this product very soon. So perfect, I'll be on the lookout perfect. for that. Yeah, that's exciting. And I mean, I, I don't think we even really explained like why you might need this. Um, I think I can probably, I'll give my attempt at explaining this, but uh, basically when you are in VR, you got two controllers and they're totally separate from each other. They don't have built-in attachments so that they can steady themselves when you're in real life and you're holding something, holding a stick or, or a longsword or whatever, a, a sports accessory, whatever it happens to be, the whole thing is, is together and you're just, you're holding the whole thing and moving it around. Uh, you're not, your hands aren't, aren't going apart because both of your hands are gripping the physical thing that is built together. But then in virtual reality, this thing doesn't actually exist. The greatsword mm -hmm. doesn't actually exist in real life. And so we are basically just holding thin air and it's hard to keep our hands aligned with each other. And so with attachments like what Cayman Wolf is talking about, you are able to more easily not do this kind of thing where <laughs> I'm just like right. moving my hands around and it's getting super janky. That doesn't happen quite as much or, yeah, or even at all when you have Yeah, it's attachment. almost impossible. See, you, you yeah. have to, without this thing, you have to, you know, in, very intentionally keep your hands very close together as if you're holding a two-handed weapon. And in the heat of battle, it's almost impossible to do. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, so and that's I, why I people... People do exp or like uh, express their concerns for how janky two-handed weapons are, even though so many people requested like, oh, I really want a greatsword, but then it is a little bit janky, and that is the reason. It's not really something that developers can control. It's something the community can with attachments and uh, with their own, their, their own choices of whether or not they want to try out these attachments and, and make it work better for them. So. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but I feel like um, going back to the, the topic of uh, str uh, streaming um, VR content, I feel like it makes content much more interesting to watch if mm -hmm. the person who is behind the IRL camera looks as if they are, you know, into, you know, the, the game that they're playing or into what they're doing. Because if you go, you go look at some content creators who, who uh, stream content with sword play, and I know you can't see my IRL, IRL camera, but in the game, you know, they look like some kind of badass, you know, medieval warrior doing all these, <laughs> all this. Sword. And then, and then in their, their IRL camera, they're just kind of, you know, because there's no weight here behind yeah. this thing. But exactly. attachments like that allow you to allow you to, you know, take a more uh, realistic sword fighting stance and, mm. you know, move this thing in a more realistic way. And right. I just feel like content creators who, you know, sword fight and look like they're sword fighting on their IRL camera are more interesting to watch. Which, Agreed. you know, unfortunately, I'm a 55-year-old overweight <laughs> guy who, <laughs> who, who you know, struggles with looking graceful. But I, I, I do try to keep that in mind. Even, you know, even I try to keep that in mind as I create this content. Yeah. No, your form looks good. I've seen a couple of those videos of uh, Swordsman VR. Is that what, it, what it's called? Yeah, Swordsman, and yeah. Yeah. Your, your technique looks pretty good. I, I'm not a Swordsman professional, but it looks pretty good in my opinion. So, All right. That. Well... <laughs> Cool. Well, well so, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about that. No problem. Let's. Uh, I have a feeling that we're we're coming up on like the hour hour mark, and we can probably only do like another half an hour or so more. Uh, okay. So I say we try to speed run ish speed run the dungeon and sure. just see what we can do. And maybe like halfway into the dungeon, we can have another one of these conversations. And obviously, as we continue, you can always raise points or ask me questions or whatever else. Um, I, I've, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at just like having conversations while I'm killing stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's harder for you, that is totally understandable. Um, but feel free, whatever is nope. comfortable for you. We yeah, that works for me. Yeah, that, okay. that works perfectly for me. And if we don't finish the dungeon, that's fine. You know, yep. that's not really what this was about. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. Let us do it. Oh, sweet. This is actually a new, this is a new, new dungeon or new uh, room. This is awesome. Man. Yeah, Sandstorm is rough with all these ice enemies. Damn. I'm really struggling to hit that guy. <laughs> all right. Oh man, this is an awesome room. I love it. All right. 
sweet. Love All it. Right, here. Love it. Let's get this chest over here real quick. I'm zero and two on health potions. How are you? Okay, I got four health potions. I, however, don't really need any health potions because I've got the standing still ability to regenerate my health. So if you want to take these health potions, that would probably be ideal. Okay. Well, well I, mine comes back too pretty quickly. I max that perk okay. out. Oh, but, yeah, um, vitality. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So we should be good. And get this key But I, here. I can still manage to die. Gotcha. Yeah, me too. Hey, it's, it's always possible. Um, okay, so, yeah, this staircase is so cool. Uh, there's nothing to get up there, but I love it. This is this gives off such like Lord of the Rings vibes of uh, what what do they call that that chamber in Lord of the Rings? I I don't know if you're super familiar with oh, those movies. Yes, Mines I am. of Moria. That's, oh yeah, yeah, the Mines yeah. of Moria. Yeah, they they had like one specific uh, room that I don't know if you saw, but Quaker X like specifically mentioned that that room was like directly based off of Mines of Moria, and I'm I'm guessing this is kind of a similar aesthetic as well. Interesting. But. Very Sweet. interesting. And then yeah, this... I'm a big I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. Cool. Yeah. I am as well. I've uh, seen those I... movies more times than I'm sure is healthy. <laughs> and I've That's read awesome. the books numerous times as well. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, I I feel like I've read a couple books, but I definitely watched the movies. Um, and I think oh, I, I was died, a little, I uh -oh. oh no. All right, I just got to be careful not to get hit by any ice enemies. If you see an ice enemy around me, let me know. I should be good, though, with the zombies. Uh-oh, can I hold it down? Yeah, we're good. And voila. Yeah, your movement and your like your swings really do <laughs> look more realistic than than most uh, Dungeons of Eternity greatsword users. Yeah, I, I I like the that's that's one of the very few I guess complaints that I have about this game that I wish was a little bit better. And I believe you were involved in the discussion or Discord about it too. And that's it. It seems like the most effective and the default way to fight in this game is to just kind of, kind of constantly move back and forth, you know, move back mm -hmm. out of the way of the swing and then yep. charge no back in. And if yep. you were a little bit slower, you know, and the game forced you to kind of stand toe to toe and, you know, block and parry and repost and things like that, the, yeah. the combat would probably be more interesting to watch. And yep. so when I yep. stream this content, I fight in a way that's probably less efficient Mm -hmm. but I feel like it's probably more interesting to watch. I agree, yeah. I Because I appreciate you doing that, because I don't really... <laughs> I, I tend to just, like, uh, do that Well, it's hard to force of... yourself to do that, you know? I yeah, mean, it yeah. It really es is. Especially when it's not, like, something that you're forced to do in the game. And I, right. I think one of the suggestions I recently made in the Discord is to... Um, have a hardcore mode that is kind of like, I mean, I guess separate from like the sandbox mode, but kind of like that in concept where um, we would essentially, yeah, have this totally separate mode that you can choose to do whether or not you want to do it. Uh, uh -huh. And it would have more of those realistic things. We wouldn't have haste. We wouldn't have, like, we would be the same speed as the enemies. The enemies would probably be a little bit harder in that they don't just like casually walk towards you really slow um here we, we can go to this room i don't think it's a fight that way they yeah. wouldn't have to be as concerned about you know breaking the breaking. balance of the game by tweaking exactly things. i actually talk about that hardcore mode more of an experimental mode than anything and there's a game that i played that i mean this is like totally separate to vr but a game called, called brawlhalla that's like a fighter game and it's it's really simple in concept and I feel like because of that simplicity, it's easy for them, them to mess around with different concepts and, and different um, actual like technical features within the game. 
And so they do have a totally separate experimental mode that they play with. And I think that that's been an amazing way for them to push out different uh, different mechanics into the game. Uh, and they've they've really improved their game, Brawlhalla, through this just experimental mode. And it's not necessarily a hardcore mode, which I would like to see in this game, but basically just any experimental mode would be really cool to see to possibly push it into the game, but then possibly just stick with it in a hardcore specific mode, maybe even two modes, maybe an experimental and a hardcore. And then from that experimental, you kind of like branch out, whether to hardcore mode, whether to the actual game, or to like some other random challenge mode or something. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. there's just, there's so much potential within this game to make it more than just one mode and one thing, but rather like a whole massive game, kind of like these MMOs out there and maybe not massive, but um, I see potential for that. And I see potential for, I don't know, making things. Yeah, and I think, that's things. A, yeah, I think that's a great idea because a lot of people don't realize, see, I come from a software development background okay. and a lot of people don't realize that even, you know, when they suggest making these tiny little changes, why don't you just, just do this in a <laughs> live break the service whole game. game? Yeah. In a live service game, any little tweak just, just requires a monumental amount of regression testing and, and, you know, being put through, you know, to, uh, test servers and, and and a lot of potential unforeseen downstream effects from little bitty changes and yeah. so having different game modes you know that don't have, that are kind of uh isolated from others is just a great way to implement those kinds of things w yeah. w without and then regression testing Right. And then they wouldn't be like required. They could still have a beta kind of like this where people do test out like big changes, but then those little tweaks that they could make could just be put into that experimental mode that is basically segmented from the actual game, even though it is in the actual build of the game. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I think that that could be really awesome. Um, and I don't know how practical that is. Again, I'm not. I am not like you, a, a software development guy with a background in software development, uh, but I like to, I like to believe that I have some sort of knowledge in that space, uh, and I do have some technical knowledge outside of just playing video games. Well, we're getting to the point, you know, in the world today, uh, it's like, you know, uh, like who doesn't really, you know, nowadays? nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to have some some degree of technical expertise just to integrate things that you use in your day to day life, like various types of social media and yep. various types of uh, you know software applications. And yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I totally agree. I mean, like you don't come from a software uh, background, but when I earlier when I said Meta needs to support that with their API. You knew immediately what I was talking about. Yeah, application you know? programming. In 1990, <laughs> yeah, in 1990, you know, people, only people who were very technical people would even know what that acronym meant, yeah. you know? And I mean, also, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily less technical than the average person. I, I think I am more, uh, like, above average when it comes to those technical things. Um, I, it's just that I don't, like, specifically code all the time. And I do have experience right. coding classes in, in school, high school, college, that kind of thing. Um, but I just, I haven't gone out of my way in my own free time to really delve into that or in my, in my work environment, I don't do much coding itself. Um, but I, hey, I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. I have a question for you what, because I've mentioned this on my channel a few times and this is just, this just came from the rumor mill. Mm -hmm. uh, if I pick up this health potion, if this health potion spawns randomly and I don't pick it up and I leave it, yeah it despawns at some point. But I heard, and I don't know if this is true, and I'm hoping that you can verify this for me, that if something has been in my inventory, then it won't despawn. Like if I picked it up and put it in my inventory, then the game somehow flags that as being, you know, associated with me and then it doesn't despawn. I think that's true. That is also, okay. yeah, that's something that I don't know by heart, but I do remember somebody talking to me about it and I am pretty sure that that's the conclusion they also came to, and I'm pretty sure I okay. saw it as well. And I think it has more to do with like keys and maps, so that you don't 
you don't forget or you don't lose the keys and maps in, in case you accidentally mm-hmm. leave it somewhere you can just like come back later and oh man i forgot the map I and gotta, it'll be there i gotta go back and get it and and it just happens to translate into potions just because they're probably built a similar way so yeah so we got two more rooms here i think we can get through this dungeon and hit a few more topics while we're at it did we oh we no come back down here we didn't get this this room right here little dead end room okay there we go Yeah, what do you think of, uh, in fight? Oh! Okay. What do you think about, uh, in these fights, if, when we're melee enemies, if we weren't able to back off from the fights, like, if it kind of blocked us there, that's like, I feel like that, that seems like a really funky idea, but the, the concept of just, not just like being forced to stay in the fight Sounds and block good. and parry oh i died again damn i'm sorry oh, man you're good you're good do i have a I do not have a resurrect okay you do have invisibility more things oh, no, good. Okay. but yeah no i i feel like when i'm talking about that out loud i think it would probably be a better idea to like better refine the melee in this game and i guess maybe not make it more like swordsman vr but i mean potentially have some of those yeah where like i think one of the big things is when you walk into an enemy i'm pretty sure even if you don't walk into their blade or their weapon itself you still get hurt from their like arms just touching you and stuff like that Uh um i feel like if they took that away or they made it so that these weapons don't just like the tip of a weapon doesn't do as much damage as an actual swing of a weapon. I feel like that. Be yeah, because swing. countless times I will, countless times I will actually block mm-hmm. a, a, an enemy's attack, yeah. and somehow some pixel touched me somewhere, yeah. you know, and it gives them credit for for hitting me. So it could use a little tweaking. Um, yeah. But I'm pre- I'm fairly I'm pretty pleased with the combat overall. Yeah. Um, but the idea of it locking you when you get into a fight, man, that would be awesome. I, I don't think that it would be possible really to implement that yeah. w- without just a drastic change to the, you know, just a drastic overall um, change to the to the combat. I mean, maybe that could be. But that would be awesome. Maybe that could be one of those hardcore or experimental features where, like, when you get yeah. locked in, and not that you can't move, you just can't use your joystick. So you can still use, like, if you have a space, you can still back up one step or move forward one step, and you can kind of use like those real life mechanics of of kind of spacing yourself with a little bit of distance or like kind of getting a little bit closer but backing off just a little bit that could be really cool but i also don't know how uh technically easy that is probably very hard um well i think what it should do is just i think what it should do is just slow you down yeah to where when you move around with your joystick you don't just fly around the map like you you know like you normally do but you'd move it maybe a quarter of the speed or something like Mm -hmm. that uh because walk mode or something or or even yeah because Yes, because that would, uh, like, if you engage someone in combat with a sword, you don't, you know, you're not just standing, you know, the way you would stand if you were walking or running. You're going to spread your, your feet a little, a little further than shore width apart. You're going to, you know, get down a little bit into a fighting stance. So you've got a lower center of gravity, and that is very conducive to moving quickly very short distances yeah. to you know to to um you know to dodge and things like that and repositioning yourself in combat but it is not conducive to just hauling ass and moving at full speed yeah. so if they could do something within the game to simulate that i, like that. I think that would be yeah if like, i think that would be every time you enter the room basically every time that music starts playing in in like a hardcore or experimental mode maybe it could graduate to the actual game but I think if when music is playing, they just have it so that you 
yeah, you, you slow down and you aren't able to just sprint around the room with haste or, or even without haste. Like you just, you do, you're kind of locked into that position or, or it could be like how far you are from an enemy. If there's an enemy, a certain distance from you. Cause I know there's pretty large rooms that you do want to just be able to get across the room to get to the next enemy. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I think that could be pretty cool. There's potential in that idea, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's maybe for version two or something, maybe for <laughs> Dungeons of Eternity two or something. I, I just feel like it would be too too big of a combat overhaul. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with the combat all, you know, all in all. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little arcadey, but that, you know that's okay. Yeah, um, they, they can't do of course, Dungeons of Eternity two because it's it's Eternity for a reason. It's gonna it's gonna continue to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, we'll see. That is that is true. That might not be the case. And I, I would like to see that. I would like to see, you know, games like uh, this and games like Zero Caliber, you know, really continue to, um, you know, live on. Like, uh, you know, like Call of Duty that's been around for 15 years, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, I, I really do think this game has potential to, like, so much staying power when it comes to how much people enjoy this game and just, like, the mechanics in this game are, are amazing. Um and foundation. If the company, yeah, if if um, other gate continues to grow and has the financial resources to you know to really expand upon it, yeah. it's it's got great potential. Yeah. And I think they took that first step with the in-app purchases of like growing financially. Like, you, I, of course, they still have a, a game that you have to buy, so they probably have some funds behind them already. But uh, yeah, the more cosmetics they're able to pull out and, and bring to the game more cosmetic DLCs in that purchases um, that could be pretty pretty helpful for them and I, I'm pretty sure they want to stay as a fairly small team base um, so yeah I, I don't know how practical it would be to really expand their team or or how how they feel about that it, well, it just it, you know, I, I think they I think they've got the right idea. It doesn't need to be large. You, you don't want to be a large, large lumbering, lumbering corporate, corporate entity, entity because, because that in and of itself, itself uh, you know, tends to slow down uh, progress. What they need to be is a small, nimble but extremely talented uh, and forward-thinking group, and I, I think that's what they are. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree. But uh, all right, let's let's get into the dungeons. Um, have you so when you start these probes, do you usually hold down A or use your hand to scan? Uh, <laughs> it depends on if I'm creating content or not. I, I, like, I like to, to you know, you I know, think it, it looks, looks cooler, cooler to use, use your, your hand. hand. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> but it's not it's not super practical. It's more convenient to just yeah, press A. Exactly. Yeah. And and for a while it was actually broken, so you couldn't hold the um, you couldn't just put your hand there and scan. Your hand. But I, I do like that they fix that. It makes more sense in VR to scan your hand, uh, but then it is more practical for people that play more. You know, with the whole down there, it's more convenient to start to match in the room. <laughs> I just had. I just did. <laughs> Did what you were talking about where I just like barely touched. I didn't even see him. I just turned around and my sword happened to touch him and he went flying back through the air. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, and the, I think the arcadiness of the combat isn't always a bad thing. Like we're, we're talking about this hard bit of making the, the fight a little bit more realistic, but I do think that there is some merit to having these, these arcade elements. Not definitely. Super, super realistic. Yeah, de definitely, definitely. 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 Yeah, I feel like there's a, a ton. Yeah, of I don't. Out, I, there's a ton of games out there already that do try to extreme realism, and it's I feel like almost a saturated market. Of yeah, it, when I'm talking about things that they can do to improve, I'm, I'm sitting here throwing my axe at you because you look like an enemy. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I love this skeleton. Yeah, yeah and, and when, when I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about things, things I feel like they could improve in the in the game, you know, I mean, you can say that about anything. Yeah. That is not to say that I'm not 
uh, extremely happy with the combat in this game. I think they, I think did, they did an they awesome, did an awesome job. job. And the blend, and the blend of, of arcadiness and realism, and realism is great. Is great. See, like, you, see, can, like, do you can do things in this game. game. Where, are Where are you? Where are you? Over here. See, like, see, I, like can I can reverse, reverse my, grip my grip on this sword. On this sword. Like, like, yeah. that. like that, you know? You know? Oh, and, then, yeah. and then a lot of games, a lot of games you can't do that, you know? You know? And then I can throw... And I can do that with a dagger. Like, I can take and reverse my grip... Reverse, reverse my, my grip, grip with a dagger, dagger and then stab, stab that way and then reverse it back, back. and you know and you know you can't, a lot of games a lot of games don't let you do that you know right. you know and yeah. and and furthermore, and furthermore you, you in this, in this game, game you, you can't, can't do, that do that without, without a little, a little bit, bit of practice, practice you know you know yeah yeah agreed and they're actually the the long sword you used to not be able to do reverse grip but in this beta build this is the first time we're able to so i don't know if you realize that or got the chance to awesome. really test it out but yeah it's awesome it's something that we look are at that man and i can yeah we can finally <laughs> yeah, like stab I love it. on the ground a lot easier um also have you uh i, I forgot what i was gonna say that's okay but yeah no I, I do think that 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 addition there is pretty cool and they do they do care about those little tweaks i i think that like enough people had complained about the great sword. That was one of the complaints that like made sense for them to fix. Uh, it's just like, yeah, that, that reverse grip there. So. Yeah, no, I think I just I think it's just a great game overall, man. I, I mean, there really is not a lot to complain about here. Yeah. I, I mean, you can always improve. Yeah. And so any of my con any of my comments about what can be improved is never me saying, well, this sucks, <laughs> you know, it's just all meant to be constructive criticism. Right, right. No, and, and I do like, I've gotten to the point where in these discussions, a lot of it is constructive criticism and like what we see as the potential for Dungeons of Eternity. But I mean, the, the basis of my channel and the basis of my original videos were this game is so amazing. And I just went over like countless things that this game has that other games don't and what, what is special about this game and we could endlessly go on about what we love about the game and i feel like at this point i do at some point at some times go down a rabbit hole of they could do this they could do that they could do all of these things but then i kind of forget that they're already doing so many amazing things with this game and yeah it's, it's just a balance i think to have a healthy balance of the criticism and and what we love about the game already so well, here's a good analogy for you. Yeah. And let me preface this by saying, that, you know, again, I'm 55 years old. You know, I've been gaming for a long, long time. I think it's funny when you when I go on like uh, social media sites and they have a picture of uh, like a uh, uh, PlayStation 2 and talk about how old you are if this is your first system. <laughs> Dude, my first game in console was Pong, yeah. you know, <laughs> back in the in the 1970s. And so uh, I've seen this this hobby evolve over a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. So I. In, in my mind, where we are in VR uh, with games like this right now are where I kind of feel like Doom and Doom 2 were. And, and let me explain that a little bit. Okay. Uh, I remember when I first played Doom 2, how amazing I thought it was. And after playing it for a while and starting to get a little bit bored, you know, with the tediousness of the repetitive uh, gameplay, I started thinking, man, this would be great if there were like a, an RPG or something that had this for, you have to remember, you know, the first person perspective games were not common back when that game was released. Yeah. There was only like Castle Wolfenstein and basically that was it. Right. And so I'm thinking to myself, it would be great if they could take this framework and expand upon it and make it into a much more robust, full, uh, full on game using exactly the same mechanics. Yeah. And that's kind of where I feel like Dungeons of Eternity is. I mean, it is a great framework, a great foundation, and they could take this and add so many like RPG elements and so many like massive multiplayer game elements mm -hmm. and whatnot and still use the same, you know, the same combat mechanics, the same uh, graphic style, uh, the same engine basically, yeah. and, just, and just build upon it. And that's kind of where I feel that this game and other uh, other games are in VR right now. We're just at the point where we've, you know, when VR first started getting popular, it was mostly just tech demos. It was mostly just like, look at the potential of this platform. Right Now it's like, here are some solid games in this platform. 
but they're fundamental games. Yeah. And and they have a lot of a lot of room for for growth and de- development. And that's kind of where I feel like we are with with VR right now. I totally agree. Yeah. Me in my 20s, I mean, I I don't exactly relate to what you have there with Doom and Castle whatever Wolfenstein <laughs> or whatever that was. Um, <coughs> But yeah. I, I have heard of those games. I have like kind of learned about them, and and some of the old ones I have even played. And like I've played Nintendo 64, and I've played text-based games and and browser-based games after that, and whatever else. But mm-hmm. but yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Like you seeing the evolution, and a lot of these older people who who have actually seen that evolution, it's probably even more amazing to them. Uh, some people, it's scary, but people like you it is it is really cool and i'm i'm in the bandwagon of when technology uh, gets better i i find i tend to see it as something that is really cool rather than scary and of course there is there are people that should be warning and like be skeptical and like look at these things in depth and make sure we're not getting uh overthrown by ai and whatnot but I, I just I think the that we're getting right now has so much positive potential and uh, get in the gaming space especially uh, just because I'm a gamer and I see you're a gamer like we we like these things we like having fun and and not just like being uh, stuck in in real life of just like work this nine to five job and do this specific thing make money and and ha- live your life that way you can also have hobbies outside of it and. Uh, I, that's not even really like a thing I really got into, but just VR gaming as a hobby, I, I think, is kind of what I'm getting at here. Is it's cool. To, well, I, I think gaming in and, yeah, yeah, I, I think gaming in general has become mainstream entertainment. And Agreed. you know, really, that was kind of the that was kind of the theme of my channel when I first started it was the the fact that uh, you know I wanted a channel that targeted an o- older demographic like myself because like it, yeah. you know we're, I mean we're definitely out there because mm-hmm. the the thing about this hobby is like I said my first system was you know Pong in 1975 you know and as I've gotten older and matured this hobby and this these technologies have right along with me and so you you never get ti- you never get tired of it because mm-hmm. just about the time that you do some other kind of great uh, evolution uh, of the hobby comes along and right. so there are there are a lot of us out there but what i've found and and i i i i found this to be interesting as i was thinking through it before um before we started this uh this this um uh interview um what I found is that that theme, that idea from that for that channel, for my channel, doesn't really play out the way that I was kind of imagining it. And the reason that it doesn't is because there's not a lot of content that, I mean, there's not older gamers and younger gamers. We're all just gamers. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there's not a lot, there's not a whole lot out there to differentiate, you know, gameplay or a game as being something that would be of, you know, particular interest to one age group and not the other. It's yeah. just, it's just a, it's just a hobby that just kind of brings all uh, types of people together. Yeah. And so I do, when I look at my demographics on YouTube, I, I you know, it, I mean, it's, it's across the board. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I see my audience see that there are multiple age groups that, I've got, and I, I don't. People like well, their ages when they do too. Maybe I have different numbers than it's showing me, but yeah, I see a spread from. I don't know. I don't think that it shows whether people are under eighteen, but I'm sure I have some under eighteen audience, and then people that are closer to their twenties, people that are in their thirties, forties, and and even past that. I think it is just cool that yeah, it something I mean, kind of brings to spend a game or another and and it is kind of sad that a lot of people are out and like uh, here even though you mentioned gaming is more mainstream these days there is also the narrative of gaming is a waste of time and a lot of people as they grow up, which i totally disagree with and i'm sure you do too, yeah but as they grow up you like, oh, I got to support my family. I got to do this, got to do that, pay for this, all of this stuff, all of these excuses. And some some are very valid. I understand those situations. Um, but I also believe that, yes, you can always be gaming. And my friends that are, like, transitioning into adults, even though uh, we've been adults for a while now, um, some of them where I've totally known 
they aren't coming nearly as much. I don't play as much. Well, I am a good player still. I don't game as much as I used to because I just don't quite have that much time. I still I, I put it in my schedule. I make sure I game. It is important to me. It was really fun, and it's kind of like a stress reliever and just something to really enjoy. And yeah, no, I think I think that you're totally right that it is pretty mainstream, but then there's also like the skeptic out there. So. Well, that that seeing it as a waste of time, I think that's something that's mostly owned by by my generation. I think by the time you know uh, Gen Z, you know, gets to be my age, it's going to be just you know very accepted as mainstream entertainment, almost like watching television or anything else is these days. Right. You know, um, I agree. Yeah. So and games are becoming. Yeah, I, I think that's just because, and like, and kind mm-hmm. of like integrated, maybe not even realistic, but kind of integrated into people's daily life anyway. So. Yeah. Well, not only that, but like uh, the you know the the world of, uh, of 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 psychology has you know kind of seen uh, the the potential of I, I mean you've heard this term gamification you know mm, yeah. as a way to as a way to train uh, employees and managers yes. and workforces and yeah. things like that. It's uh you know it's I think that stigma comes from the fact that when the when the hobby first started it was just a very simple hobby that was mostly of interest to kids mm-hmm. and you know. And at that time I was a kid. (laughs) And so my generation kind of still sees it as a lot of people in my generation still have that stigma that says, oh, uh, gaming, uh, that means kids. And if you're an adult and you're doing that, then you're wasting your time. Yeah. So I've also, I've heard, I think that'll die off. Yeah. I've heard that um, gaming was targeted more so for adults when they were initially coming out. And of course I didn't live this time, but when you then, some of the older games were coming out. I I heard that they were, yeah, just not really targeted at kids. And then once they started to be targeted at kids, because I'm pretty sure failed with adults, that's when it really took off and, and sort of the stigma kind of got built. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that really is changing as the younger generation has become older. And like you mentioned, it's it's kind of just something that's becoming normalized. And even like VR, VR is a great example of a lot of kids are in VR, I would say more so than adults. And especially like once the standalone headsets came out and their parents were able to buy it for them and they, they were just able to easily hop on. And I think just having a younger generation growing up with VR and understanding the potentials of it and really enjoying it, that's just going to normalize it as we get older and as time goes by. Yeah. But, but it is really yeah. cool. And I do think that anybody can enjoy VR. They don't have to be young um but yeah no it's oh and there's so much there's so many different w- different ways to enjoy vr yeah um not that, just dungeons uh, of you know it, yeah. <laughs> not just dungeons of eternity believe it or not yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, like i i love that game uh, demio i don't know if you've ever played yep, that yep, I, I, I know you and uh you and i think quaker or you and um i've definitely mentioned uh, it in a few videos yeah yeah i i actually haven't played much at all uh, i think i might have done a trial at some point but i i really i've been trying to get like a specific friend to try it out with me and and it's just it's tough it's tough it's hard to convince people to get into vr some even once it, it really play. is yeah just like convincing them to both get a headset and then also buy a game for it it's just more more difficult than i i <laughs> Yeah, I have a cousin that I have played Call of Duty with for years and years and years. I mean, since, you know, the Black Ops days, yeah. uh, early Black Ops days. And I have been trying to get him to play uh, Zero Caliber with me. And I just I just can't do it. You know, he's always like, yeah, we'll have to do that. You know, we'll do that sometime. And then it just never happens, yeah. you know. And I just continue on making Zero Caliber content. Yep. But I, I just I know if he picked it up and tried it, he 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 would love it. You know, exactly. just can't get him to do it. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. But yeah, I think uh, we should probably wrap up because my headset will probably crash at some point with uh, the full sword. But um, <laughs> it was great having you on. I'm I'm so happy we were able to do this. And I mean, I guess you have me on as well. So <laughs> we're just, we're both, this is perfect. Uh, but yeah, no, it was fun. We can definitely do this another time. And uh, yeah, do you have anything you want to you wanna end with or, or mention? Uh, well, I just I want to mention to uh, my viewers or any potential viewers, uh, the, the chat is not working in here. Uh, I'm having some issues with that. And uh, so I'm not able to see your chat. So I don't know if anybody's actually watching the stream or not. Um, 
hopefully if not they'll go back and watch the you know watch it after i close it out uh because i i just think this is great content i think we've had some great discussions here uh but uh but if you are watching it and i'm i'm ignoring your chat i'm not ignoring your chat i just don't see it so that's the first thing that i wanted to say and the second thing is i will link jj's uh channel in in the description of my video and i encourage you to check out his content uh it's it's, it's great content and it's not just dungeons of eternity content although i think he focuses a lot on that but it's other uh content as well and it's just it's really good stuff and um apart from that i just want to say to my subscribers before we sign off this is Kane wolf the decrepit gamer reminding you that you're never too old to game and um we'll we'll see you we'll see you next time so that's that's my wrap up <laughs> jj so uh do you have one you want to do uh oh did i lose you i love, I love it that's perfect oh. uh no, can, can you still hear me? Yes, okay, yes. Yeah, there, there was a little bit of a pause there. I think we're our connection was for a second. But we're good. Uh, I heard most of that, and I love your sign-off. Uh, my stuff is basically just uh, do all the YouTube thing, and uh, I came in Wolf, and yeah, enjoy. I will catch you in the next one. All right, man. Fist bump. Oh, yeah.